हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ मशीन डिजाइन इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द कॉन्सेप्ट विच आर रिलेटेड टू द फटिंग फेल्यूअर फ्लक्चुएटिंग स्ट्रेसिस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द फ्लक्चुएटिंग स्ट्रेसिस एंड द एंड्यूरेंस लिमिट सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द फटिक फेल्यूअर फॉर द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द फटिक फेल्यूअर एंड फटिक लोडिंग यू विल हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इट सो एज यू कैन सी फ्रॉम ऑन योर स्क्रीन the fatigue loading are also known as a fluctuating loads the loads which vary in magnitude as well as or in uh, directions with respect to time are known as the fatigue fluctuating or alternating loads the variable stresses induced in the component are known as the fluctuating stresses so it should be pretty much clear up to now that the chapters which we have completed in the entire syllabus up till this video are all are based on the static loading are not based on the fluctuating loading so we are dealing with the fluctuating loading where the magnitude and the direction or any one of them may change with respect to the time so if the magnitude is changing then the stress will also change so that is why we named it as a variable stress if the uh, direction is changing let's say if we are talking about the direction uh, in the tensile or we can say it's a nature of the tensile uh, with respect to time after certain of uh, a certain amount of the time it will converted into the compressive so the nature as well as, well as the direction of the force is changing and that is why we can consider it as the fluctuating load or fatigue load or alternating load and the stresses generated due to this types of the loads are known as the fluc uh, fluctuating stresses so this should be pretty much clear now what is fluctuating what is uh, fluctuating loads and the stresses now what is fatigue failure when the mechanical component is subjected to a fluctuating loads it fails at the stress considerably below the ultimate strength so up till now what we have studied in our uh, static condition loading uh, let me give you a brief brief, brief idea about it uh, we used to have a stress stress strain diagram where we studied that the material is going to fail at this point something like that okay so this is your yield point for the uh, material is considered as a failed at the yield point if it is the ductile material and if the material is brittle it is considered to uh, considered to be failing at ultimate point at this point so yield and ultimate both are the point which are considered as a failure point of your material but what happens in the case of the fluctuating loading the fluc due to the fluctuating loading this is the axis of the stress the uh, the stress does not reach up to this level or up to this level you if even if your uh, stress level is with, within this range okay even if your stress is less than the yield point stress or the ultimate stress the, your material is having the probability to get failed if it is uh, the fluctuating stress so that is why this type of the failure is also known as the fatigue failure and uh, the quite frequently uh, below the stress such type of failure is known as the fatigue failure so fatigue failure is of immensely importance it is very important because your material is failing beyond the limiting value below the limiting value so the concepts that you have studied uh, in up to the chapter number 9 are not going to be applied in this particular chapter in our working condition you may find this type of a condition also where the stress is going to change due to the fatigue loading or alternating loading and in working condition you cannot apply the concepts of the static uh, static loading and that is why you will have to design that particular component in a different manner using the concepts that we are going to discuss in this chapter okay so that is why fatigue failure is also very important first of all you will have to identify that this is the fatigue failure and then and then you will be able to apply the concept of this particular designing designing criteria then the when the mechanical component is subjected to fatigue or fluctuating load the stress induced is known as the fluctuating stress that is the very basic definition of the fluctuating stress now we will move forward to our upcoming slide that is the fluctuating or the alternating stress as you can see the diagram is self explanatory but i will still explain you this diagram this is basically a diagram of the stress with respect to time 
so if you look at this axis this axis is representing the stress values and this axis is representing the time value okay so time uh, sigma versus time diagram is represented over here so as you can see uh, at t equals to 0 second the stress value is at this particular level then uh, uh, if the, if you increase the time or with uh, with respect to the time the value of the stress is increasing up to this point this is our maximum value of the stress after that after that uh, next time period the stress is continuously decreasing up to this point this is our minimum stress value and again this cycle continues with the same interval of the time so you can see that there is a maximum stress of this value a minimum stress of this value and this cycle repeats itself with with the same amount of the interval of time now from these two values you will be able to find out the mean value mean value is represented with this dotted line so from the mean value the value up to this maximum point and the minimum point is same which is represented by sigma a what is sigma a which i will explain to you in this manner first we will see the value of the mean stress what is mean stress mean stress is the stress corresponding to this line this dotted line which is represented by sigma m so sigma m can be calculated using this equation if you uh, if you go from the uh, graph itself then it is also known that you, if you want to calculate this mean stress then you need this difference this difference can be calculated uh, by uh, sigma max plus sigma m why we have done it sigma max plus sigma m because if you do it sigma max plus sigma m by 2 then you will get this much value why we have done this like this because this difference by 2 will give you the answer of this but first of all you need to calculate this sigma max minus sigma minimum and after that you will have to add this much value this diff half value is only this much and the mean value is the summation of this value plus this value so def definitely you will have to calculate it by sigma max plus sigma mean by 2 so this is how you are going to calculate the maximum value as well as the mean value uh, and from these two value you are going to consider the mean stress using this equation there is another stress that is also known as an alternating stress or it is also termed as a stress amplitude so the stress amplitude is represented by the sigma a or we can also write it as alternating stress okay so alternating stress is represented by sigma a it can be calculated by sigma max minus sigma mean by 2 it is this half value it is this half value and this half value can be calculated using the sigma max minus sigma mean upon 2 so this is how you are going to calculate these two values why we have uh, calculated the uh, values of the sigma mean and sigma a sigma mean and sigma a both are the controlling factor for the design of the fluctuating load okay similarly we are going to consider another type of the fluctuating load that is completely reversed stress now for the completely reversed stress as you can see the diagram is on your screen uh, the stress is represented on this axis and the time is represented on this axis now uh, as you can see the zero value is uh, over here let's say at the time t okay at the time equals to zero the stress value is represented over here so this is the stress value and if you increase the time with respect to time the stress is increasing up to this level that is why it will give you the maximum amount of the stress if you further go with respect to time then the stress is decreasing up to this level so the maximum height that you can get from this graph is this much height and that is why from the zero or the reference line it will give you the maximum amount of the stress that is sigma max that is this much amount of the stress and minimum line minimum point uh, the lowest point will give you the answer of the minimum stress from the 
reference line. So if you consider this as a reference line and calculate this much amount of the stress, then it will give you the answer of the sigma minimum. So sigma minimum and sigma maximum both are represented in your diagram. And why we have con considered it as a completely reversed stress? Because as you can see in the uh, in this this uh, interval of time, your stress in is in a positive direction. It is in a positive direction, and uh, in the further interval of time, it gets converted. It is reversed in the uh, negative direction. What is positive direction? Positive direction is generally considered as a tensile, and a negative direction is generally considered as a compressive. And that is why you can consider it as a completely reversed nature or completely reversed direction stress. So in this interval, you will find it as a tensile, and in this interval, you will find it as a compressive. So in our working condition, there may be the chances where the component is being pulled and pushed together in the uh, uh, successive interval of the times and that is why we will have to consider this type of a, um, a mechanism or this type of the uh, equations to calculate the sigma m and sigma a now what is sigma m sigma m as you can see is the mean line which is passing through the zero line and that is why sigma m value is equals to zero so mean line is equals to zero why is it zero because even if you put this value in your basic equation of sigma m it is the same equation sigma max plus sigma mean by 2 but uh, if you put the value of these two stresses sigma max is sigma max but sigma mean sigma mean as you can see is equals to sigma max but with the negative sign so if you put minus sigma max in this equation instead of the sigma mean then your answer would comes out to be zero and that is why we have considered it directly as a zero now if you consider the stress amplitude then the stress amplitude equation is also the same one that we have seen in the previous slide that is sigma max minus sigma mean by 2 this is the same equation but again put the value of sigma mean from here to here then you will get the answer of sigma a as a sigma max this is our final answer so this was all about the com completely reversed stress now we will see another type of the stress that is repeated stress repeated stress diagram is represented over here as you can see the stress is being repeated from its initial value so initially the stress value is zero now with respect to the time it is increasing up to this level and then uh, it is decreasing back to zero value it is decreasing back to zero value again the stress is nullified now again its stress is applied up to the maximum value and then again it is nullified over at this point again it is applied again it is removed again it is applied again it is this type of a stress is known as a repeated stress so as you can see there is no minimum stress in this particular diagram and that is why the minimum stress is considered as a zero so if you put this minimum stress value in your equation of the mean stress then you will get the answer of the mean stress as a sigma max by 2 again if you want to calculate the stress amplitude or the alternating stress you will have to just insert the value of means minimum stress into your equation and you will get the answer of the uh, sigma a as a sigma max by 2 so sigma mean and sigma a both are the same in this particular type of the case so we will see those cases in our example if it is asked in your examination now we will see the final topic of our today's session that is nothing but the endurance strength of the material which is represented by st now uh, and endurance limit of the material which is represented by se dash now what is the endurance strength endurance strength of the material is given by is defined as the value of the completely reversed stress now completely reverse stress means where there is a one uh, in time of a time interval where the stress value is a tensile and on a, for the another time interval it is it is completely reversed from positive to negative or from tensile to compressive that the standard test specimen can withstand without the failure 
so if you are applying completely reversed stress and uh, uh, the maximum value of the completely reversed stress that uh, your specimen can withstand is known as the endurance strength of the material okay so the point at which the material is going to fail beyond the value of the stress is going to be your maximum value or the endurance strength the endurance limit of the material the endurance limit of the material it is defined as the maximum value of the completely reverse stress that the standard specimen can withstand for a infinite number of cycle for infinite number of cycle for uh, in the previous definition it was given as the for the given number of cycle for the working condition but this is the limit where the specimen is safe for the infinite number of cycle we can consider infinite number of cycle as a 10 million cycle okay uh, up to which the we can consider it as a infinite okay so that that particular limit within which your material is safe is considered as a endurance limit for the fatigue of the material so this were the concepts which you needed to understand for the understanding of the upcoming lecture uh, so in this particular lecture we conclude over here and we will see few more concept in the upcoming lecture till then thank you